Welcome back to Daily Theology. This is day four, and that means we're right in the middle of studying what the Bible says about itself. It's called the doctrine of Scripture. On day one, we began with the inspiration of Scripture, which means that the Bible was breathed out by God and is therefore His Word. On day two, I talked about the inerrancy of Scripture, which means that the Bible doesn't have mistakes or lies in it. And yesterday on day three, we looked at the authority of Scripture, which means that the Bible alone has the right to tell us what to believe, and what to be, and what to do, as well as what not to believe, what not to be, what not to do. Today I'm going to address the sufficiency and necessity of Scripture. The sufficiency of Scripture means that in the Bible we have everything we need to be saved and to live in a way that pleases God, both as a Christian and as the church. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All Scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be perfectly equipped, lacking nothing. The Bible is not lacking anything we need or in any way. Psalm 19.7 says the law of the Lord or the word of the Lord is perfect. What we have in Scripture is the complete revelation of God's truth. So that when the Apostle John wrote the last word of Revelation, that was it in terms of God speaking to us. Since then, whatever God says, He does so in and through the Bible. To suggest that He's still speaking or still revealing truth outside of the Bible or in addition to the Bible is to deny the sufficiency of Scripture. It is to imply that Something we need for life and godliness is missing from the Bible. Deuteronomy 4.2 says, You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God. Proverbs 36 says, Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you, and you be found a liar. And among the last words of the last book of the Bible are those in Revelation 22, 18 and 19, which say, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the city of God. I don't take that as merely a warning at the end of that book, but rather as a warning at the end of the book, the Bible. Scripture is sufficient. Scripture is also a necessity. This means that without the Bible, we would not and we could not know how to be saved and how then to live in a way that pleases God. Jesus said in Matthew 4.4, 4, Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. 2 Timothy 3.15 says, Scripture makes us wise to salvation. And a part of that wisdom is understanding our need of salvation. Paul said in Romans 7.7, 7, If it had not been for the law or for the word of God, I would not have known sin. Later in Romans 10.17, he wrote, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Nothing makes the necessity of Scripture more evident than the subject of salvation. Now, we can know some things about God and about ourselves and about life from creation, like my dog Major. But without the Bible, what would we know about Jesus, about His incarnation, about the gospel, about his life and death and resurrection, about forgiveness and righteousness and eternal life, about repentance and faith, about growing in the faith, and about worshiping and serving the Lord with his people, about making disciples, about his second coming, about heaven and about hell. 
I think you know the answer, but I'll tell you anyway. Nothing. We would know absolutely nothing about the greatest thing that there is to know. So we need the Bible. We need to read it, and we need to study it, and we need to hear it. I'll close today with the words of David in Psalm 19. He said this about the Word of God. It revives. It makes the simple wise. It makes the heart rejoice. It enlightens the eyes. Only it, only the Bible. Then in verse 10, he wrote this. It is to be desired more than gold, even much fine gold. And it is sweeter than honey, even honey from the honeycomb. Do you know why he wrote this? Because of the necessity of Scripture.